So welcome everybody to DuckCon number six. It's hard to believe it's already number six. Um, and people always ask us what, what was DuckCon one because we can't see it on the website. Uh, it was actually on Zoom because there was a plague. So uh, the DuckCon number six, it's number six uh, here in our hometown. And I would like to welcome uh, each and every one of you uh, who came out. Uh, I've heard some stories of people traveling from very far and I have to say we are quite flattered. Um, I also want to sort of maybe not warn you, but inform you that this is the first time that we are live streaming uh, DuckCon uh, to everybody, you know, hello world, uh, to any, anybody out there. And that is um, also the reason why we are in this particular time slot, because it sort of works for everyone. Uh, so people in, in China, for example, can watch and people in the US can watch, although it's quite early. So I apologize to everybody in the US for that. Um, and we, do, we are doing this because we noticed that we, we are getting a lot of, uh, for example, visitors to our website that were from places that we have not never done a DuckCon in and might never do a, do a DuckCon in. And by live streaming, uh, we can integrate uh, everyone. Speaking of integrating, um, here's the QR code. It's also the same QR code as you have on the side there. And there's also an easy to remember domain name, qa.duckcon.org. Um, so we're going to use Slido, which is this website for asking questions. Um, so for the Q&A after the talk, we'll um, just, I will read questions from the, from the iPad here. Uh, and you can also upvote other people's questions. That will help me to prioritize uh, the questions to ask. So again, the QR code is going to stay on the side here, so you don't have to uh, immediately write it down. Just uh, wanted to let you know. Um, this event would not be possible without uh, the wonderful sponsors. So obviously, it's not free to run an event for free, uh, and uh, so we have um, we are very thankful to Monday.com to being a gold sponsor for this event, and we're also very thankful to Real and Crunchy Data for being silver sponsors for this event. Uh, again, a big uh, thanks. Uh, give them a round of applause for sponsoring. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, there should be some merch in your bags. Uh, there, some people are also around. Go talk to them. But now back to the main event. Uh, we're talking here today. We are, we are assembled here today to talk about DuckDB. And uh, obviously, for um, for DuckCon, it's for us. It's also super interesting because we do not, you know, always hear all the stories from users because we're sort of, you know. Fi fixing bug number 487 or something like that. So DuckCon is really meant as an event where you, people that use DuckDB, can sort of talk to each other uh, about you know, what you like, what you dislike, things like that. Um, this is really, truly inspiring to see where our sort of wild idea from seven years ago, I think, has, sort of has, got, has led to, and it's really, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to see you all here, as I've said. Um, it's always a good idea to repeat the mission statement, right? So this is something I learned in one of my presentation courses. Uh, what we, and it took us actually some years to figure out what this was, even though we had an intuition. And the intuition is really to move from this world where people generally fear large data sets because they make everything more complicated to a world where you are not longer scared, you're no longer scared of this big pile of CSV files because you know Okay, DuckDB is most likely going to handle it, and that will be it, right? So this is really where, and this is also the, where the motivation for DuckDB came from, was we saw people struggling with anything that didn't fit in Excel, and then um, sort of, you know, so the tools available at the time were just not nice or, you know, not instilling confidence. So that's really the where we want to be. And what's, we are also helped by industry trends. So here is a, a very scientific plot that I made. Uh, no units. Excellent. Um, so, but what has happened is that uh, also in the, t in the short time since we started working on DuckDB is that the capabilities of a single node in terms of processing data have essentially risen quicker than the, you know, the, useful, the growth of useful data sets. And a couple of, actually made this slide a couple of years ago and predicted a data singularity where 99.9% like .9 of uh, data analysis queries could run on a single node without any problems. And we thought, yeah, you know, this is future, future work. But then it actually happened that uh, people 
uh, confirmed this quite recently. Here's a, a post from uh, Fivetran from George Fraser, uh, who uh, analyzed public disclosed data from Snowflake and Redshift and showed that uh, the P99.9 .9 of dataset sizes was under 300 gigabyte, which is really shocking if you think about it after you know, a decade of talking about big data. And Gabo here has actually done experiments on this, which brings neatly connects to the 300 gigabytes. So he has shown that we can actually run the industry standard benchmark TPCH uh, with a scale factor of 300, which is roughly equivalent to 300 gigabytes of input data on a Raspberry Pi. So, so uh, you know, not, not just, we cannot just, these datasets are just not as big as, they, as we thought they were. The hardware that we have is also together with software like DuckDB, shockingly capable in the sense of processing it. And if you add zeros to the number of, of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the size of data here, uh, we'll just have to go to a bigger computer. And on the right here, we actually recently ran scale factor 30,000, or Gabor did, uh, on a machine with 96 cores. And you can kind of see how this single node capability uh, is really growing. This is a slide I have always had at DuckCon, and you can see I have this old version of the slide here in this endless sort of loop into history uh, that are just uh, the previous versions of the slides. I want to highlight some numbers on the adoption of DuckDB, which, of, as always, is, is blowing our minds. Um, I want to highlight three things here. Uh, we have, in case you don't know, we have extensions for DuckDB for features that we don't really want to put in the, in the core itself. And last month alone, we, had, we saw 32 million extension installs, right? So this is totally wild, where somebody typed in, you know, install Postgres or whatever. Um, and that's been done 32 million times. We've also ha saw a crazy growth in the amount of unique visitors to our website. Uh, we now are around 1.8 million unique visit web visitors per month. And it's funny because we accidentally made one of the bigger websites of this country. I think we have beaten the Lidl at this point, and for the people who know. Um, and also, because of you know, recent developments in social media space, we have uh, started uh, posting more to Blue Sky. Uh, we're also really happy to see a growing community there. If you're not on, on Blue Sky yet, I encourage you to do so. I'm also on Blue Sky, and the hashtag for data-related topics is just the best, because it's data BS. And you can just type data BS, and it's perfect. Um, yeah. But uh, so that's kind of the sort of super, super high level intro. And uh, next, uh, we will have uh, Mark, who's going to tell you a bit about the technical aspects of DuckTV in the recent months. Oh. Hello, hello. Thank you all for coming. It's great to, uh, to see such a turnout every year at DuckCon. Uh, it, it, it keeps on blowing our minds. That's, uh, it, it keeps growing, keeps getting bigger. It's fantastic. Uh, and it's great to have you all here and see all the cool things that you guys are doing. Very excited for all the next talks as well. Um, I, previous years, we had the tradition of doing a, um, a DuckDB sort of up-and-coming thing. Um, we are not really doing a big talk about that today, but I nevertheless, I do still want to talk a bit about the things we've been working on in the near future and what we're planning. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of critical to, or like very, a very cool future development that we're, we have been working on and has been going on is the extension ecosystem. So you may have used DuckDB extensions before, either knowingly or unknowingly, Many of the things we do ourselves that we make for our users are extensions, right? Like the HTTPFS, the web connectivity, those are extensions. The Brocade Reader is an extension. Um, you can do a lot of cool stuff with extensions. I think it's one of the cool future directions we want to take the project is to enable the community to do all of those same things. So that's why we made community extensions, and we keep on working on making it more, uh, more easier to use, e easier to make and build these extensions so that you guys can extend DuckDB and do all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, and so we don't have to, uh, like, you, you don't have to push it by us. You can do it all by yourself. There will be some talks as well today talking about some of the very cool extensions that have been developed, so it's very nice. Um, I want to briefly talk about this duck. This is the Harlequin duck. Uh, this is a, a duck that is native to the northeastern hemisphere that lives close to the oceans. Um, 
very pretty duck. It's also the duck that we have chosen for the next DuckDB release, uh, DuckDB v1.2, that will be released next week. So if you haven't uh, picked up yet, all of our releases are named after various different duck species. And this one is the Harlequin duck, or the Latin name, which is Histrionicus, um, which is releasing next week. Uh, I, we, we, uh, we predict it will. There's a, there will be a blog post detailing all of the features in there. I think it's a very exciting release, but just to have some uh, bullet points, the CSV reader has received a lot of love. It's even better now. Um, we have some nice improvements to the friendlier SQL. The CLI autocomplete has been reworked. It's much better now. We've done a ton of performance optimization work. Many queries are a lot faster. Um, and we're introducing the C API for the extensions that should allow you to build community extensions much easier. Um, and we're introducing a lot of uh, logging features to uh, make it easier to uh, productionize, to put DuckDB into production and keep track of what is actually going on. As for what we're doing next, well, we have tons of different things we're working on, but I think this year is probably going to be the year of this. There's a house on a lake here. You guys probably kind of can figure out what that is. The, the, the lake house things is uh, most likely going to be our main focus. Um, so that's it. Um, happy to talk about any of these things after, uh, during the breaks or in the, um, in the drinks after. And uh, then I will now hand it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Let's get to questions. Oh, questions. We, we do have time for questions. Oh. And I get to pick which questions we're going to answer, which is uh, <laughs> just not, not, not a conflict of interest in any way, shape, or form. Mm. But you have upvoted them. This is great. I can see that already. Um, so I'll start with the, the highest voted one. If you could double your team tomorrow and focus on one major architectural change in DuckDB, what would it be and why? I will, I, will, I will have Mark answer this very easy question. Yeah, uh, of, of, of course, we're going to do scale out, right? Scale out, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I GPUs. G GPUs. No, yeah, yeah, no. no, no. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I think if we were to double our team tomorrow, we wouldn't do a big architectural change. I think we like our current architecture. We think it's been going very well. Uh, we would have more. Uh, people to put on different projects, clients, integrations, and things like yeah. that, of course. Yeah, uh, to, yeah. this is one of the things that, we are, that we're seeing right now is that the amount of client integrations that we have, like you know, the Java client and so on and so forth, that is something that could scale better with more people. The actual engine work, we don't think, could scale better. So that's something that we could put more people on. Uh, this is actually very active. Yeah. Uh, any near-term plans to add support for partitioning? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this is also something we are planning to work on this year. Yeah, it's part of the lake house formats. They all support partitioning. Yeah. Um, what are the future plans for DuckDB Wasm? Um, well, I don't know, uh, to process queries, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the Wasm ecosystem, like the in-browser uh, DuckDB, that's of course an ecosystem that's changing, right? the environment is changing fairly quickly. And so I think there's going to be some exciting stuff just from the browsers making more things possible, wasn't moving into other places, things like that. But uh, you could talk to Carlo, who is, where is Carlo? There, back <laughs> there, he's waving. So he can, you can talk to Carlo <laughs> if you have wasm questions. Um, what do you think about DuckDB replacing some SaaS workflows in the financial and pharmaceutical industries? Um, I suppose you mean SaaS, the statistical software, I think. I, I, I remember if you used it at university, uh, way back when, um, didn't like it a lot. So um, from that experience, I think DuckDB could replace a lot of these workflows. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, I mean, obviously, a, a tool that charges you a thousand euros per person per year is gonna have to be much, much better against one that doesn't cost anything. Just saying. Um, yeah, uh, can you say a bit more about the upcoming lake house worth in relation to Mother Duck? I think these are orthogonal things. I yeah. think this is not really related to Mother Duck. I mean, they will probably support Lake House as part of that as well, but yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's separate. Yeah. Um, any plans to make it more easy to contribute to extensions? C++ is not my jam. Yeah, uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> How could you not like C++? <laughs> <laughs> we love... C no, okay, no, yeah. we get it. Um, so, uh, yes, 
Yes, ab absolutely. So that's one of the reasons that we're excited about the C API extensions. It's not because you can write extensions in C. It's because the C API is kind of this universal language you can use to write extensions in other languages. So one of the things we're um, planning to, uh, like, ha have already worked on is extension support in Rust and maybe also in Go in the future. Yeah. So you can already develop extensions in Rust. There are some already. So. Yeah.